Good evening, everybody. I hope you've had a good weekend. It's always kind of sad to be Sunday night, isn't it? Because we know we all have to go back to work tomorrow. <laughs> but hey, we're going to have a little fun before we have to turn our attention back to the work week. Because we've got some breaks to do tonight. And we've got a lot of memorabilia. And then some Allen and Genter baseball as well. So before we get started, you know the drill, most of you. There might be a few new faces tonight, but the majority of you have been here with me before. But for the benefit of those who might not have been, let's start go by going over some information. The first thing you see there is a note about my feedback. And that's just because that comes up a lot, right? Guy, you know, people ask me, hey, when, when are you going to be able to leave feedback for me? I found that I just couldn't keep up with it as well as I would like, so I set it a, a while back to be completely automated. So what that means to you is anytime you leave positive feedback for me, you will instantly get it in return. So how about that? No waiting, right? Not too many things in life these days that we can do with no waiting, but that's one of them. The second thing there is to say thank you, because I appreciate everybody who bids and breaks and chats and hangs out with me, stop by and... Uh, just check in and watch the break. Whatever brings you here, I'm glad you're spending part of the weekend with me, and thanks for stopping by. What we're looking at right now is a list of breaks that are already up and running on eBay. These are the things that are ending over the course of the next five days. Um, so tomorrow night, we're going to open some Onyx Preferred Players Autograph Baseballs. We opened a bunch of cases of those uh, a few months ago. This is a different checklist, though. This is the National Edition, and it only has about... I don't know, maybe half the teams represented or maybe a little over half. So I set it up as a player break. So that one tomorrow night, you're not going to see listed as, you know, for instance, Dodgers and Angels, etc. You're going to find it listed as Aaron Judge or Carlos Correa or whoever, whoever the players are on that checklist. So just be aware of that small change in there. We will also open another half case of our Leaf Autograph football jerseys. Those were a lot of fun last night. We had some good pulls out of them. And we've got uh, a half case more of that tomorrow night. And Immaculate Collegiate Football, we're going to open another case of it and a case of Certified. On Tuesday, we will get into Cornerstones Basketball. That's the last of the Cornerstones that I have. We'll open some more Allen & Genter on Tuesday night as well. Wednesday is a crazy, crazy, insane day. We have got all kinds of things releasing that day like all the stuff you see there and I've kind of decided to just go for it so it's going to be a long break but we're going to open everything that's coming out pretty much so it'll be a full case of elements football a full case of noir basketball which if you're not familiar with that check it out it's uh, black and white images for the most part it's very high end usually has good resale value and uh, it's a little over two grand a case so it's not cheap and then Immaculate Baseball comes out that day. So we're going to tear into that. Always full of nice relics and loads of one of ones in that. Topps Chrome will open a half case of it. Because by the time we've opened those other three cases, you know what? It'll be late. So we're just going to do a half case of Topps Chrome. Thursday, we will open another New Era Baseball cap and a full case of Certified. Friday night, you know what? I intended to open a bunch more stuff in my stupid listing uh, service that I use. There's something wrong with it, and it's really, really slow. And what normally would have taken me 20 minutes took me an hour, so we only got two listed. And that'll be another case of Elements Football and a half case of Chrome. Hopefully they'll get it fixed, and then we'll open loads of stuff on Saturday and Sunday. But it's going to kind of really depend on if they can get off their rear and fix whatever their problem is. For tonight, this, this is the order we're breaking in. So it's going to be the mini football helmet, the new era baseball cap, the baseball jersey, the three-peat basketball box, and then the half case of Allen & Genter. So if you're here for Allen & Genter, you probably have about a half an hour, something, you know, 20 to 30 minutes from now. We should have uh, the rest of that stuff opened and be getting ready to roll into your break couple of other things you need to know from this page. Our free shipping breaks, which is everything but Allen & Genter, I am projecting to ship out on Saturday. Anytime you do a break with me that offers completely free shipping, you can expect it to go out five, six, seven days after the auction ends, somewhere in that kind of general time frame. 
our paid shipping break tonight, which is Alan and Genter. I'm projecting to ship out on Thursday. I'm going to try to get it out sooner than that, but to be on the safe side, I'm going to leave the projection at Thursday for the moment. And the last piece of information on this page, if you are in one of the first four breaks tonight, the memorabilia breaks, and your team is not the team pulled, you are entitled to a consolation card, which can be from any year in any series. I just reach into my you know, box for that team, grab one out. And typically I'm going to send that with your next hit. So the next time you do pull a card or an item, uh, I track that stuff for rolling 90 days. So I would look back at the prior 90 days, gather all those up and send them off with your next package when you do have something to ship. That's normally how I would handle that. If you want it done differently and you don't want to wait, you want that uh, consolation card sent to you right away, drop me a note on eBay. We'll get it uh, on the way to you. So first up tonight is 2018 Gold Rush Autograph Mini Football Helmet. This is break number 22. We haven't been in one in a while, and so it's, yeah, kind of miss doing the minis. And, of course, everything we're opening tonight ended tonight on eBay Sunday night, July the 29th. Team names are on the left-hand side, and the winning bidder user ID from the eBay user ID of the winning bidder, yeah, I used to be able to talk, is across from each team on the right-hand side. And why did I cut somebody off there? I, for some reason, well, I think it is, um, I somehow or another didn't cut and paste the Washington Redskins. So, whoops. And now they're going in there real, like, tiny size. What's the deal with that? Oh, there we go. But you know what? I'm pretty sure it's Oilers Moon uh, fan because I believe that I remember seeing that he had the last three teams that kind of stuck out in my mind. But hang on one second while I check it real quick and make sure that that is uh, right. And if it is, then I'm just going to paste him right in there. So give me one second, guys. Double check that. Well, uh, what is going on? Did I type this thing in wrong? Sorry, eBay's giving me problems. Hang on. <laughs> eBay never wants to cooperate with me these days. It always takes me around the bend. Yes, it is also Oilers Moon fan. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make 100% sure. So I don't know how I failed to copy that, but apparently I did. So sorry about that, guys. Let's get that uh, fixed. There. Now, now we're ready to move on. And, of course, a new spreadsheet will go up before each and every break. So if you're not in this break, you're going to get a chance to see your name up there when we get to your particular item. And I am taking autofocus off. I manually set the focus. That will make the background go out of focus a little bit. So no need, uh, no need to adjust anything. That is by design. Aaron, what's happening? You've got five shots at the mini helmet, he says, or five consolation cards, depending on how he looks at it. I'm trying to open this this way because somebody, I don't know, I'm going to like cut my hand off. Somebody a couple weeks ago didn't like the fact that you couldn't see the top of the mini helmet. But I swear to you, this is like, it shouldn't be this hard to open normally if it's setting up right. But anyway, of course, I guess that defeated the purpose. I was supposed to slide it out that way. I don't know. Anyway, I'm trying to remember to show the seals and such. Gina is here too, and so is Geo9223 and Philip all in the house. We have Jason Witten, who uh, has been was with the Cowboys for how many years? I think he's retired uh, just this season, right? Or at the end of last season, but played for the Cowboys for a long time. And look at that. I actually recognized his signature. It was legible. I could see it all on my own without looking on the bottom. Hey, hey that's unusual. So the Cowboys with our mini helmet tonight and Jason Witten. So that is going to next bring up our new era baseball cap this is a whole new product so uh they just came out with this and i figured you know what we'd give a couple of them a try and see how they come out so probably you saw this a moment ago but if someone jumped in late or you didn't see this a second ago i'm not going to read through it all again but if you did not see it please take a moment and look at what you see there on the screen so that you have all the same information that everyone else has 2018 Hit Parade Series 1 Autograph New Era Baseball Hat, break number one. Same format where we have team names on one side and then, of course, bitter 
usernames across from it there on the opposite side. And I'm kind of I'm kind of anxious to see what we get in here myself. The checklist was pretty awesome. Of course, they never show you the full checklist, right? They only show you part of it. And there's our little security seal and all such as that. Um, so they never show us the whole entire checklist. It's always just part of a checklist. I really don't like opening these things sideways. I swear to you, I'm going to cut something off of my body. <laughs> that is... That is not a handy way to open these, let me just say. But I am trying to make sure everybody's comfortable with the way it's done. So, and apparently that wasn't the right way to open this box either because it just does not even want to come out of there. And we have some kind of little advertising doohickey thing in there. <laughs> Gina, you're funny. <laughs> Gina always makes me laugh. <laughs> she says, you need to show me the upper left, was it the upper left corner? Yes, the upper left corner of the box again. <laughs> uh, James, all these products have all the teams represented. I mean, they don't give us a full checklist most of the time, but Hit Parade and Gold Rush, uh, Gold Rush in particular, if they don't have all the teams represented, which is super rare, I think I've seen it once and it was up for a hockey product, they will tell you that not all the teams are represented, but generally, yes, all the teams are represented. Even if we don't know who all of the teams, uh, who all the people are, they only show us a selection of it. You know, nothing I can do about that, but they uh, should all be represented because, you know, they're made to break. So I'm trying to figure out why this is, like, showing up so hot on the camera. Maybe it's the white behind it. Does that fix it? Not really. Well, anyway, for some reason, it's wanting to wash out, but you do have a JSA authentication sticker right there and an MLB authentic uh, there, and I don't know whose signature that is, but it's an Atlanta Brave. Let me see if, it, if they had it on top of the box. Oh, they did, and I forgot to look. That is Ryan Klesko. That's whose signature that is. For the Atlanta Braves, Ryan Klesko. All right, so that is our new era cap. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, Gina, about these uh, caps. Like I said, I just figured we would try it. You know, they're not, they weren't priced super expensively, so I was able to offer them at a starting bid of, you know, two bucks a piece and figured we'd see what we got out of it. And so I bought two. We've got this one and one more to try and if we like them, we'll get some more. If we don't, you know, no harm, no foul. Honestly, that's the way most of these things are the first time you break them, cards or otherwise. You kind of just have to feel <laughs> feel your way through it, and we kind of figure out process of elimination as we go along, what we like and what we don't in general. And once again, if you did not see this a moment ago, please take a minute and look up there to check out your projected shipping date and the information about the consolation cards in case your team is not the team that is pulled in our memorabilia breaks tonight. And we are off to the races on Hit Parade Series 6 Autograph Baseball Jersey Break Number 9. And same format, of course, and also ended tonight, the 29th of July. Can't believe July is almost over. That's crazy. We did have a team that didn't sell, actually, two. Noted there as no bids buyback. Our orphan teams are the Mariners and the Blue Jays. So basically, that just means if a Mariner or a Blue Jay comes out, it just has to hang out here with me. Otherwise, if it comes out for one of the other teams, of course, it's going to go out the door to you, you guys. <coughs> Oh, Alex, you recognized that signature well ago uh, on the Braves. I didn't. I couldn't even read the signature. I had to go, as you know, I had to go look it up off the box. <laughs> oh, and James did too. Both of you did. Well, how about that? You guys are... I'm not very good at reading the signatures normally. I was happy I could read Jason Witten, you know, so. <laughs> Geo is after the Yankees. I don't believe we've got a Yankee in here, though, I'm afraid to tell you. This looks like it's going to be an Oakland A to me. That's what our colors are looking like. Let's find out. Let's find out who this is. Chavez. 
And we have a TriStar hologram authentication down here, an MLB authentication up there. There is your signature. There's a TriStar authentic uh, paper authentication that's going to go with it as well. Looks like this is a custom jersey. Yeah, so it just says athletics across it. No MLB logos or anything like that. When you do get this, if this is coming your way, if you have the Oakland A's and this is headed to your house, please make sure that you find this little piece of paper if you desire to keep it. Make sure you find it before you toss out the packing. I generally have it folded up inside the jersey. And if you get all excited and, you know, grab the jersey out of there, that little piece of paper could fall out and go into Never Never Land. And, you know, if you want to keep it, I'm saying make sure you look for it before you toss everything. Although, really, on TriStar, I have to tell you, those little papers are kind of not important. The important stuff really is the, the actual sticker that's on the item itself. Especially with TriStar, there's not, I don't even think there's a number on that that matches it. It's just kind of a generic thing that they put in there. And here we are again. I know, we look at this a lot. I know we do. But people jump in and out all the time. And you'd be amazed at how many people don't know this information at the end of a break, no matter how many times we look at it. But I will say one more time, if you have not looked at this, please, please do. It gives you your anticipated shipping date and information about your potential consolation cards. And we are getting ready to open 2018 Hit Parade Series 2 three-peat basketball box. This is break number six. And you guys kind of probably mostly know what the drill is in here. And it has three autographed items in there. We're going to find an autographed basketball jersey, an actual basketball itself, and an autographed picture, all three in this break. A couple of teams didn't sell. That's the Grizzlies and the Clippers. So those are our orphans here. Everything else is in play. This is a gigantic box. And I don't even know how to show you like all the seals and all the stuff, but you get the idea. You see the plastic. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't have anything other than just plastic on this one. It's actually not even so much plastic as it is cellophane. You know, there's kind of a difference, right? I mean, I don't exactly know how to explain the difference, but there is, I think, a difference. I think that's more cellophane, and it's loud and annoying. Okay, here comes our picture. Here comes our basketball. Here comes our jersey. Let's get rid of this big box and get it out of the way. And see what we have found. So we have Adrian Dantley for, um, for who? <laughs> Adrian Dantley, was he a Buffalo Brave? And oh man, I always have to think about this. Were the Buffalo Braves, are they the current kings? Who are the Buffalo Braves? Hang on a minute, I gotta look this up. I can't remember Adrian Dantley. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure that the Braves were the Buffalo Braves. But what I don't know is who they are now. And I always want to say it's the Kings, but that may not be right. Right now, if you're telling me the answer in chat, I can't see it because I am using the iPad to look this up. So, so hold tight there if you're filling me in on it. Uh, I'll see it here in a hot second. Um... Yeah, who are who were the Buffalo Braves? I mean, who are they now? <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe they're the Clippers. Who the heck are the Buffalo Braves? It's always, I, they're a team out west. Let me look it up again. Sorry. I did just make sure that it was Buffalo Braves, and it is. So now I am finding out. Uh, blah, blah, blah. That doesn't tell me. Oh, okay. So they are the Clippers. All right. So I was wrong the first time, right the second time. Okay, so the picture comes out, the autograph photograph, it's got a DA uh, card, card World hologram sticker, 
It's Adrian Dantley, the uh, Buffalo Braves, which are the current Los Angeles Clippers. Tells you the guy's name, and there's the COA on the back. So that gets that one squared away. Okay, now... Oh, Gio, I didn't see you took off. Uh, sorry, guys. I've been uh, distracted a little bit here, so sorry about that. Uh, and Ray, you were asking about the mini helmet. I see that Gina jumped in there and answered that. Thank you, Gina. And <laughs> Gina, you're funny. Writes Mavericks and then told you Clippers. <laughs> All right. Here's our paper JSA authentication. This is a nice one, guys. This is an authentic uh, NBA jersey for Chris Stapps Porzingis. So uh, another nice pull out of our three-peat boxes here. There's your autograph and your JSA uh, sticker that goes along with the card that we saw a moment ago. And you can see here, there's all of our authentic uh, Swingman jersey info. So nice hit if you have the Knicks with Chris Stapp's Porzingis. So the jersey, excellent hit for the Knicks. Let me get it put back in its... Uh, bag same deal guys make sure you find this before you toss out everything if this is coming your way because you don't uh you know unless you don't care about keeping it then doesn't matter but if you do look for it please before everything goes to the to the bin all right this is oh boy <laughs> why can't they just give me people that i know off the top of my head <laughs> Because they just want to make my life difficult tonight. Okay, so this is, that's probably the correct way for it to go. Here's your, it's a Steiner Sports uh, Authenticated. And it's Bar, Bar not, you know I'm not going to say his name right. Okay, we all know that I'm not. It's Andrea whatever, whatever. So, <laughs> let me look him up. Because I don't, you know, I've seen the guy, but I really could not tell you where that goes. And I should be able to, but I can't. Maybe also, I mean, he, wasn't he a Nick? But I don't know if he was only a Nick. I don't know. Let me look him up here. Uh, come on, buddy. It's loading, loading, loading. I'm loading the stats so I can find out. Oh, he wasn't just a Nick. He was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seasons with, because he's retired, apparently. This is why it matters how many seasons he was somewhere. So he was seven seasons with the Raptors, and then one, two with the Knicks, and one with the Nets, and he has been retired since the 15-16 season. So, since he's retired, you guys know how this works. That means he's going to go, there's your authentication uh, sticker. That means he's going to go to the team that he played for the longest, which is the Raptors. So there's the overview of his signature. And this will just be in the carry case with it. You'll get that little drawstring carry bag that you saw there a second ago. And this authentication card will be in there with it. And this is going to the Raptors because the guy is retired and that is where he spent the most seasons. So, and now for some reason, YouTube is trying to reload my chat. So it, it made me lose my chat, guys. So I'm sorry. I'm waiting for it to reload. When I switch back from looking up our guy here, YouTube went nuts and cleared out my chat. Okay, now is it coming back up? No, like really slowly. Okay, sorry. Hang on, guys. YouTube is really being super stupid. Um, okay, Toby, you said that you thought it was the Warriors. You thought what? Oh, you thought the jersey was the Warriors. You just saw the colors? Yeah, I mean, for sure it did kind of look like that for a minute, didn't it? Didn't it? I hit our camera while I was... Ra uh, wrestling there with a basketball and all that sort of stuff. Okay, so our three-peat box, of course, we had the Porzingis jersey 
going to the Knicks, we had the photograph that was of the Buffalo Braves, which are the current Clippers. And then we had the autographed basketball guys retired. So by default, went to the team he played for the longest, which was the Raptors. All right, now we are getting ready to head into Allen and Genter. So, once again, Allen and Genter, I'm projecting to ship on Thursday. If I can get it out to you quicker than that, I will. If you were in one of the other breaks for memorabilia, your projected shipping date is Saturday, the free shipping breaks. Consolation cards do not apply to Allen and Genter. There's a zillion cards in here, and every team is going to pull some, so no worries there. And, of course, consolation cards uh, for the memorabilia breaks. Normally, I just send out the next time you pull something. If you want it done differently than that, you just shoot me a message in eBay, and I'll take care of it. And I do track it for 90 days, if you, if you wondered. So we are getting ready to open six boxes of 2018 Allen & Genter Baseball. This is a half case break. It's break number four. It's the back part of a case that we started, I don't know when, several days ago. Maybe about this time last week, actually. And looks like we had one orphan team in here. That would be the White Sox. So anything that comes out for the White Sox hangs out here with me. Otherwise, uh, anything else that comes out is going to go to one of you. We have, of course, as you see, lots of extra categories because Allen and Genter, not just baseball cards, all kinds of other stuff in there, too. So non-baseball celebrity, that is um, our athletes and sports writers and sports casters and comedians, any, you know, any of the famous people that are not baseball players are going to go to non-baseball celebrity. That's whether they're mini or full size. Then our next category that will be beaches, moons, nature, natural wonders, that sort of thing, and weather. So like, you know, the bomb cyclone, all that stuff goes to that category. Then there is a category right below that. It's going to cover uh, baseball equipment, which I see that I managed to have a typo in, but you know what I mean. So baseball equipment, stadiums, and baseball superstitions all go to that category. Finally, we have a category down here for non-baseball, non-celebrity minis. And that is basically all the other stuff, like hot peppers and uh, indigenous heroes, etc. You will notice that this time, for this break, I did go into the description and list out kind of more specifically, this category includes this, this category does not include that, that sort of thing. I think everybody kind of knows all that anyway by the titles, but nonetheless, it's in there. In case you need it for any sort of a reference point, we've got it in there. So, SNS Design Hot Peppers goes to the non baseball, non celebrity minis category. That's what that's where everything else falls that wasn't in one of the other categories. But it does say, I'm pretty sure I, and that's the one where I specifically went in and said it does include this. And I listed like all the possibilities. And it does not include this. And I listed all the things, you know, that would be in one of the other categories. So that should be fairly well fleshed out in the listing description at this point. Which I kind of thought it was anyway, because, you know, non-baseball, non-celebrity, and not covered in other categories. But there were some questions about it that someone had in one of the breaks. So I just decided it might be better to go in and clarify it. And then we, are, we know we're all on the same page, right? <laughs> Gina says she, she has to go now because uh, <laughs> Alan and Ginter causes her to have anger problems. <laughs> Gina's always good to make me smile and laugh uh, at least a couple of times. And I, I always enjoy uh, having you, Gina. You always make me laugh. <laughs> See, she made Aaron laugh, too. <laughs> S&S Design, I know you were, just, you were just giving me a little grief over that. I, I know you were, but <laughs> I, I still have to explain it if you ask it. You know how it goes. So our first box loader here is for the... A's, and it is Mark McGuire looking very thin in that picture, right? Much thinner than the Mark McGuire we remember at the end of his career, for sure. So each box of Allen & Genter, we are looking for three hits. 
And the hits in here can be all kinds of things. They can be an autograph, they can be a relic, it can be an autographed relic, a rip card, a booklet. Um, I think that's covered probably the majority of it. But some combination thereof, we will find three per box. Of course, we'll find a box loader in each box, and we've already seen it for this box. Sometimes they're the bigger size like that. Sometimes they're uh, smaller cards. And we'll probably find a mix of the two as we go along. We should find a home run challenge card in each box. And those work. They're kind of interesting. You get them and they have a code, a little silver spot on the back. You scratch off and it gives you a code. You go to the website, which is also on the back of the card, and enter that code. And then you get the opportunity to choose a date where you think the player on the front of the card will hit a home run. So let's say you pull Bryce Harper and you went and entered the code. It would give you a list of all the games for upcoming games for the Nationals. You choose the one where you thought Bryce Harper would hit a home run. If he did actually hit a home run in that game, you would get a special uh, card. I believe it, they print them on tops now, but usually fairly low numbered and also entered into a drawing for something. I think like a trip to the Home Run Derby or the All-Star Game or something. Something like that. But anyway, that is how those work. They have already been in Series 1 and Series 2. Here they are in Genter. Uh, we, I think we... Do we have them in Archives? We might have had them in Archives. They will probably be an update, I'm guessing. And it's the same uh, checklist. So... That home run challenge, if you already know the checklist from one of the earlier products, it's the same guys and the same, it's really actually just the same cards, just inserted into different products. So, so that's the deal there. And for the most part with this, because there is a lot of base and things, we're just going to kind of buzz right on through it. Now, if something you want to take a better look at or whatnot, you just let me know and we'll slow things down. Uh, but that is for the Yankees, our first mini. And here is our first hit of the night. It's a relic for the Nationals. It's Steven Strasburg. And I just realized I didn't set my sleeves out on the table. I was so busy opening memorabilia, I forgot to set our card sleeves out here. So let's get that under control. And now we've got our, our first hit out of the box for the Nationals. Maybe that'll set the tone for the Nationals tonight. And they'll pull something amazing. So the first time we come across stuff, I'll tend to kind of tell you what category after that. I won't. So this guy, of course, goes to non-baseball celebrity. Uh, that, of course, goes to moons. The beaches, moons, nature, uh, weather category, to be specific. Castro for the Marlins, that of course goes the same thing, Be beaches, moons, weather, uh, that's non-baseball celebrity, and so on and so forth. So for the most part, I think you guys will know when you see it where something goes. This guy is like a hundred-year-old usher or something. He's worked for the Pirates forever, and of course it just goes directly to the Pirates. Because he's got on Pirates garb and it says Pirates on the card. And that's where it's going to go. So this is one of our home run challenge cards. This one's for Adam Duvall and the Cincinnati Reds. Method Man, of course, he is a non-baseball celebrity category. So is this guy. Actually, we'll just set those down like that. And solar eclipse, that's going to go to beaches, moons, nature, weather. So is that. And, yeah, so you guys get, you guys and gals get the idea of how it works. If you see a card go by that you have a question about and you're not sure where it's going to be sorted to, please jump in and let me know. SNS and s Design, there's a, there's a hottest pepper for you. <laughs> So this is going to non-baseball, non-celebrities, minis. That's where that goes. We've got a lot of different things in Allen and Genter these days. Well, every time. So you have to kind of 
figure out how to account for them all somewhere along the way. And we have a framed hit coming up, and it's for the Minnesota Twins with Jorge. I was hoping that would be red ink. It's not red ink, but it's still a nice little on-card autograph and a framed, uh, framed mini there for the Minnesota Twins. I'm just kind of trying to sort our non-baseball celebrities into a separate pile if you're wondering why they're getting stacked somewhere else. Yes, it's because that way I can keep up with them. This goes to baseball equipment slash stadium slash superstitions inserts. As does that. I'm just going to, for shorthand, call that equipment. There's an Otani-based rookie. Flags of uh, other nations that goes to the same category as the hot chili peppers or the world's hottest peppers or whatever it said there. I feel a mini hanging out there in the back. Let's look at him. That is Strowman. And we have a black border mini of uh, Jameson Tallien for the Pirates. The Pittsburgh Pirates, that goes to equipment. Stadiums and superstitions is the full category. <laughs> SNS design, you didn't win the spot for the peppers. <laughs> oh well, I don't think it I don't think it went for very much tonight, actually. I think it went kind of low. I don't remember exactly, but I think it was kind of low. Minnesota Twins have a second hit. This is Miguel Sano Relic. And you know that's kind of always the way it is with the extra categories in here. They really are all over the place. With teams, most of the time, once you've done a couple breaks, you can kind of get a pretty good idea of where the price of a team is going to land within a reasonable range. But you certainly do not have that happen on the extra categories in Allen and Ginter. They're always all over the map. Might be $20 one night and $2 the next. Because there's a whole other set of collectors, of course, that don't really care about the baseball card part that collect Ginter because they want the inserts. So, got all kinds of people uh, that get interested in Allen and Ginter, not just baseball fans or baseball card collectors, I should say. And there's a nice little Taylor Black Border. For the Yankee, for the Dodgers. Why did I say the Yankees? Oh, because I was just kind of thinking out loud, I guess, about the Yankees. Of course, now I guess we got to start thinking about the Astros because, uh, you know, you already had Carlos Correa on the DL. Now you've got Altuve on the DL and. They're kind of falling apart over there. Of course, what have they got? Like a five-game lead or something? Are they at five or five and a half or something like that? I don't know. So I guess they can afford to have some 10-day DL stints if they can just don't lose every game, I guess. I don't know. Man, I felt bad for Sean Newcomb, though. Oh, was that not awful? I mean, you are on your second out in the in the, the last inning with two outs and two strikes on the batter, and you've been and you've thrown a no hitter up to that point, and then the guy gets a hit. I mean, that is awful, man. You are one strike away from a complete game and a no hitter, and the oh, and the guy gets a hit on him. I would just be sick. I'd also be sick if I was the one who didn't stop the ball and the hit went through, you know. So our box loader here is Sanchez for the Yankees with our smaller card, of course, on that one. But man, I felt bad for that guy. I mean, that you just don't get any closer than that. You got you need one strike. That's it. One strike. You got two outs and two strikes. And you need one more to have your no hitter. Oh. That was just painful. Oh, Philip, you saw that game? I know. That was just, oh, I felt so bad for him. And, you know, he's been pitching really well, Newcomb has been. And so, I mean, you know, I'm not surprised that he was 
pitching that well, but I am I am shocked though that he got that close and then had had it taken away. That's just awful. But oh well. I mean, they won the game anyway, but at that point, you, you know, you don't care about winning the game. You wanted to keep your no-hitter going at that point. But it was not meant to be. Got some good news on my, uh, my O-line guard for the Steelers, who went down in their first practice in pads yesterday, and... I hadn't had time to, I had seen the headline, but I hadn't had time to really investigate it. And some someone was in chat last night telling me there wasn't much news on it yet. And then someone else said, oh, they thought it looked like bad, that he might be out for the year. So I was relieved to see today that he hyperextended his knee. So he's expected to be out four to five weeks, but not the season. So I was glad that Ramon Foster is going to be up and running before too awfully long. I didn't even watch the Reds play. I had so much stuff to do. And today I was uh, had a bunch of stuff to water and a bunch of stuff outside that had been neglected because I hadn't had time to deal with it. And everything, all the plants were all scorched up and wilted. It was bad. <laughs> so to spend quite a bit of time trying to revive uh, all of our vegetation today. So I didn't watch, uh, I did not watch a single game from the Reds this weekend. So I don't know if, I don't even know, I don't even know how we did. Did we win today or lose or what happened? Does anybody know? If we lost real bad, don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me the score. <laughs> Just say you lost. If we if we won or if we, you know, didn't lose terribly, just lost maybe by a little or something, then you could tell me the score. But if it's another one of those, like, 19 to 1s or something, yeah, don't tell me about that. Those make me sad. Sad, sad, sad day when that happens. I see our next uh, home run challenge card. That This one is headed to the Brewers. So we've got a Brewer and a Red thus far with our home run challenge. This is Baseball Superstition. So once again, that's going to go to the, uh, to the category that is Equipment, Stadiums, and Superstitions. All um, in there together as one category. So, of course, we've got a lot more Allen and Genter. We're going to open a little bit more of it on Tuesday night. And then we'll probably, I'll take a little break from it because we have Topps Chrome coming, as well as Immaculate Baseball. So I'll be opening some of both of those next week. And then we'll start working uh, Allen and Genter back in again after that. So we're kind of, we've got a lot of baseball out and about right now. Pittsburgh Pirates with Marte relic so we may not probably not going to see Alan and Ginter again for about a week or so but I do definitely have more so we will be breaking well I mean you'll see it Tuesday night but then not again for four or five six days after that Trey Mancini for the Baltimore Orioles our second relic and here comes our third one. They're all right there together. It is Justin Verlander for the Astros. So all three of our hits were sitting right there practically on top of each other in that stack, weren't they? The game 20 tells me that the Reds won for zip. Awesome. I like that news. So what do you all think is going to happen with uh, Matt Harvey? I mean, I hope somebody takes him. <laughs> I don't really think we need to keep him necessarily if we can get something good in return. But 
I mean, I kind of think that was their whole plan, was just to get him and hope that they could rehab him a little, get him back on track, not rehab him, like technically rehab him, but you know what I mean. Get him pitching well again, and then trade him out, so... I don't know. I don't know who. I'm sure somebody would be in the market for him. Kipnis and the Indians. Vintage baseball goes to the equipment category. Another little mini. Stadiums goes to equipment. Non-baseball celebrity guy went by there. And you know what else I saw this weekend that I did not realize? I didn't know that Sam Darnold hadn't signed his deal yet with the Jets. I, I, I knew Roquan Smith hadn't signed with the Bears. I thought he was the only rookie holdout, but he's not. That is non-baseball celebrity black border for some kind of professional swimmer guy there. So yeah, apparently uh, Darnold is holding out of out of camp because he doesn't have his contract done. So, I don't know. If I were a rookie, I'm not sure that would... Especially quarterback. I mean, you know, Roquan Smith, maybe you pick up your... pick up what you need to know a little faster. But if you're Sam Darnold and you're hoping to maybe win the starting job, you kind of need to be in there, I think. I think Roquan Smith deal is uh, has to do with the new something about the way the the new rule is, of course, about what's basically called targeting in college football these days, but leading with your helmet and something about I think he's thinking that maybe some of his guaranteed money could be voided if he gets fined or penalized for that or something. I don't know. I heard somebody kind of talking about the Roquan Smith deal, but. I didn't pay close enough attention to tell you exactly what it was. Hey, Chris, I will uh, recap, of course, all of our hits at the end of the break. So you'll get a chance to see everything that has come out that you might have missed at the um, end of the break. We'll go back through and recap it all. All the hits, anyway. Not all the cards, of course. The game 20, you went to the Colts camp. Oh, oh, you saw Quentin Nelson. Yeah, man, everything about Quentin Nelson is awesome, right? Honus Wagner is our box topper for the Pirates. I mean, Quentin Nelson will start. I don't think there's any question about that. I mean, yeah, he will start. He's a big, he's a big guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, Quentin Nelson, you need him, too. I mean, you absolutely need him. Because Andrew Luck, you know, that's part of the reason Andrew Luck got hurt. And then he played hurt for a whole season because he had no protection. So, you needed some upgrades there on your line. And Quentin Nelson is going to be good for you, I think. But it's pretty cool that you went to camp. So, how did how'd Luck look to you when you saw him live and in person? Oh, you said he looked good throwing. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. So, you know, they had kind of been saying, without exactly saying this, they had been more or less saying that it was a mental thing for him for the last several months anyway. That physically he was okay, but mentally he was having a tough time getting back in the groove. So, sounds like uh, he's back on track, which is good to see. I like Andrew Luck. s, &S Design <laughs> says you're just happy the Orioles finally won 30 games. I feel your pain, man. Definitely the Reds were kind of on the same trajectory at the beginning of the year. We did kind of right the ship a little bit to a certain extent. So it's not as bad as it was at the first of the year. But yeah, I, I know what you're saying. When you have some of those rebuilding seasons, oh, it's dreadful. And then, of course, it had to be hard for you, too, with Manny Machado 
heading out the door, you know, just all the way around. It's, it's, it's never fun when you are a fan of a team and they're getting ready to do or are doing the teardown and all your players that you like or love or that are good are shipped out the door and you're kind of like, wait, what? And then you have to go through the horrible endless rebuilding. Anthony's wanting to know how nice is the training camp area for the Colts? The game 20, where do the Colts uh, have their training camp? I don't even know where they, where they hold it. The Steelers, of course, are in Latrobe at St. Vincent, but they've been they've been at this at St. Vincent for gosh, fifty years probably. I mean, as far back as I would ever know, they've been at Latrobe. The Bengals used to be kind of close to me. The Bengals used to come to Georgetown, which is I don't know twenty minutes or so from me, as the crow flies, as they would say. Um, but then they they stopped doing that a few years ago, and they trained somewhere up in Cincinnati now. It's a little Chipper Jones black border for the Braves. Another Beaches, Nature, Moons insert. This goes, again, Beaches, Nature, Moons, Weather is technically the category, so it goes there as well. Yeah, I have been told. Anthony is asking the Game 20 um, how much the Colts sign at training camp. You know, um, the Steelers usually sign a lot. I think most of the guys, especially the rookies, tend to sign a lot at most, most camps. I guess you can't say every camp, but I think a lot of times they do. We have a framed Anthony Banda for the D-backs. Nice little framed autograph. For the Diamondbacks coming out. Stadium again goes to equipment. The flags go to the non-baseball, non-celebrity minis category. Oh, Luck State, uh, Andrew Luck stayed out and signed a long time. Well, that's nice. It's always nice when the superstar guys come over and work the line as well because you don't always find that to be the case. So it's always kind of cool when they take time to do it. One of these days I'd like to go to Latrobe and be there for Steelers training camp. I think it'd be a lot of fun. My sister lives in Pennsylvania, and she is a Steelers fan, but she's never been to their training camp either. She doesn't live that far from it either. He's, uh, Santana was stuck behind Robinson there. Kevin Kermayer for the Tampa Bay Rays Black Border Mini. I think she just doesn't want to get in the big mess of people and the traffic and all the stuff because, you know, a lot of people go there, I believe. Oh my gosh, there were 8,000 people out there today. That's uh, an impressive number for a training camp. I'm not surprised, though. There's lots of Colts fans, um, not just in Indianapolis. I mean, my dad, for instance, he likes the Colts more than any of the other teams. Here's a nice little Gliber Torres black uh, framed mini for the Yankees. Or black border, I should say, not black framed. There's a Devers rookie. Sloan Stevens is non-baseball celebrity tennis player. We pulled her autograph out of the case the other day. A bit back. Theo Epstein, of course, goes to the Cubs. Front office types and all go to their respective teams. Josh Donaldson Relic coming out for the Blue Jays. Oh, Philip 
You know what? I think when the Raiders go to Las Vegas, they will just blow up. I really do. Because first of all, Raiders fans, you know, the ones that live right there in Oakland, they're probably going to be pretty ticked. So the ones that live right there, they're not obviously thrilled that their team's going to Las Vegas. But there's other Raiders fans from around the country, and they'll be they'll be happy that they're in Vegas because then, you know, you've got other things to do in Vegas, too. You go to the game, go do all kinds of other stuff. But Vegas in general, I think they are really going to support this team because they want to have more than just hockey for their pro sports teams. I think they're super excited about getting the Raiders. And I bet you that the Las Vegas natives will show up in force. And I think people from around the country will too, just because it's in Vegas. Gary Sanchez relic for the Yankees. I mean, people are already wanting to buy the, the merchandise for the Raiders that says Vegas on it or Las Vegas, but they can't uh, because NFL won't let them sell it yet. So the Raiders, of course, are not wanting to sell a bunch of stuff that says Oakland on it because they don't know exactly when they're moving, right? I mean, they may play in Oakland in 2019, or they may already be in Vegas in 2019. It depends on when the stadium gets built and what kind of arrangements they work out. Adam Jones for the Orioles is our home run challenge. So they're in kind of that weird spot where you know this year, obviously, you're in Oakland, but 2019, you don't know where you're gonna be between the two, and 2020, you're gonna be in Vegas. So I think all the Raiders merchandise has just been saying Raiders on it lately for that reason. So, I don't know. I think the Raiders will be I think it I think it'd be fun to have a to have a, a pro football team in Vegas myself. I mean, I'll go watch the Raiders play if they've got a game when I'm in Vegas. I'll go watch them, sure. I think that's the way a lot of people would feel about it. Uh, John is asking who is the baseball jersey? Um, oh boy, who was the baseball jersey? The basketball jersey was Porzingis for the Knicks. Who was the baseball jersey, guys? The hat was the Braves. Why can't I think who the baseball jersey was? Aw, oh, somebody help me out. Remind me who our baseball jersey was. This is Devers for the Boston Red Sox. John, I'm trying to think who it was, and it's not where I can reach it right now. It's across the way. Um... It's, oh, it's an Oakland A. I should have remembered that. We're talking about the Raiders. Um, it's the Oakland A's, and who was the player? Who was the player? I don't remember the player. Chavez. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry, John. You know how I work, man. It goes right out of my head. I think about it for about five seconds after I say it on that stuff, and then it, I replace it with whatever whatever the next thing is i kind of overwrite my short-term memory when i'm doing breaks put it in computer terminology anthony you're going oh you're going to uh vegas for your birthday in august oh no that's not what you're saying you're not saying you're going to vegas where are you going in august to training camp to something else training camp maybe Oh, man, the Game 20 says he got Luck, Nelson, Kelly, Hooker, Rogers, Mack, Ty, to all to sign his football, T.Y. Hilton. Um, really, man, all in one day? That is awesome. Oh, yeah, Colts camp for your birthday. That will be fun, man. It'll be a nice trip. Yes, don't we have, do we have this week, is our Hall of Fame game this week, this Thursday? I think it might be. We might have a preseason Hall of Fame game either this Thursday or next. 
Might be this one. I don't even remember who it is. Is it the Ra maybe the Ravens and somebody? It's kind of crazy thinking that we're already getting back into football. I mean, I've been saying it feels like we've been out of football forever, but yet now that it's time to start again, it kind of feels like it's so early to be starting back in football. I don't know. It is the Ravens, okay, and it is Thursday then, Bears and Ravens on Thursday, so yeah, I was kind of in the, I was right, but that just seems so early, doesn't it? I want to watch it, though, because I want to see what they do with Lamar Jackson, because I'm sure they're going to get him on the field, and what they, what they do with him will be another question, but I want to see him play. And really, I want to see how Trubisky looks, too. I mean, obviously, we got a little preview of him last year as well, but I'd like to, like to see how he's shaping up. There is a nice little sunny gray black border for the Yankees. But I am, as much as the Ravens are a big conference rival for my Steelers, I am really looking forward to seeing the Ravens play this year. <laughs> Mainly because of Lamar Jackson, primarily. Oh yeah, you're right, Philip Hard Knocks does start this week. And, you know, I don't normally watch Hard Knocks, certainly not regularly, you know, maybe pick it up here and there a little bit. But I think I have to watch it this year because it's the Browns, and that's just kind of, it's one of those things like when you see a wreck, you don't really want to look right at it, but you don't want to look away either. That's what I think Hard Knocks is going to be like. With Baker Mayfield and the Browns. Mark Reynolds and the Colorado Rockies is our home run challenge card. So, yes, I think I will be rubbernecking a little and watching Hard Knocks this year. But I did forget that was Tuesday. I need to set my DVR for that. Bryce Harper relic for the Nationals. Of course, I guess, really, I could just get it on HBO On Demand. I guess it would really matter that much if you don't have it on the DVR. But I think I'd rather DVR it. That was, of course, Matt Olson on the Black Border Mini for the Oakland A's. But yeah, Mayfield signed his deal, of course. I mean, really, I think the only two that are holding out are Roquan Smith and Sam Darnold. So I don't know. Football should be interesting this year. Of course, it's interesting most years. There are definitely always some teams that are not really competitive. I mean, usually a couple. But there's not generally like tons of them that are not competitive. And it seems like this year in baseball that we have just a lot of non-competitive teams. So I kind of wish that it wasn't uh, quite so such a wide talent gap. Maybe that's the way to say it. Giancarlo Stanton for the Yankees, black border. And the same way really with basketball. Both of those sports right now, to me, have just too much variance. You've got a handful of teams that you know are going to be good and they're going to be really good. And you've got a bunch of teams that are going to be bad and you know they're going to be bad. What is this? Marine National Monument. So that goes to beaches, moons, nature, weather category. And there are not very many teams like in the middle for baseball or basketball, it doesn't seem. 
And I don't really know why that is. You know, if you can achieve... I mean, not everybody is on par in football, but certainly not to the there's not such the gap as we have in the other sports so if you can make it work for football why can't you make it work for basketball and baseball i don't know but i think it would be better if it was a little more competitive hey it's a rip card it's for the giants it's numbered to 50 it is will clark So, yeah, you know how these go. So, yeah, you know, I was talking the other night about rip cards and how if it were my card that I owned, I would not be able to leave it unripped, at least not for any length of time. Scott Rogowski, this is uh, a non-baseball celebrity category. So this is non-baseball celebrity, gets this relic for this Rogowski comedian and quiz show host. So yes, I was talking about how if I had the rip card and it belonged to me, not obviously one I pulled for one of you guys, but one that I owned myself, that at some point the thing would just be calling to me in the middle of the night like a Stephen King novel. I would just wake up and hear it calling my name and I would have to go rip it. <laughs> That's just... How I feel about it. I would have to know what was in there at some point in time. I might be able to wait a month. I might be able to wait a year. I might be able to wait five years. But eventually, I would rip that thing open. Probably sooner rather than later. And <laughs> so the guy who uh, actually had the, had the rip card in that break where I was talking about that, he hadn't watched the break. He wasn't watching live. And he watched it a day or two later on tape delay. And he wrote me a message. He goes, hey, I'll let you rip it if you want. Just, you know, live stream it so I can see what it is. But I said, no, I, you know, that's his. I didn't want to rip his card and take away his fun. But he is one of the few that rips them, I guess, because, you know, a lot of people don't. Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers box loader. <laughs> Jeff is asking who the jerseys were tonight. Jeff, you weren't on here a while ago when I was racking my brain. I couldn't remember one of them. Uh, one of them was for the Oakland A's. That was the baseball jersey. The basketball jersey was a Porzingis uh, authentic swingman jersey for the Knicks. And did they have another jersey tonight? That's it, right? We just had baseball and basketball jerseys, I think. Because then we had the hat and the mini helmet. Yeah, so that's it. It was the A's for baseball and the Knicks for basketball. But that Porzingis, that was sweet. It was a sweet hit. We've had actually very good luck with three-peat boxes. Uh, we pulled the Steph Curry out of one not too long ago. Now that Porzingis tonight. We pulled the De'Aaron Fox. Um... Was he out of that? I think he was out of that. Maybe he was out of one of the regular jersey boxes, but I think he was out of three, Pete. Um, the basketball was uh, a retired guy who went to the Raptors because of length of service, and the picture was uh, Adrian Dantley, who played for the Buffalo Braves, which are the current uh, Clippers. So the picture to the Clippers... The basketball to the... Did I say Blue Jays because I'm opening bas uh, baseball? I meant Raptors. I probably said Blue Jays. But it went to Toronto. And the jersey, of course, Porzingis. Yeah, I probably did say... I probably did say Blue Jays. You know, sometimes this is awful. I found, I did this the other night and I caught it part of the way through, thank goodness. But I was listing, what was I listing? Baseball, I think. And I got to, like, the phone rang or something and I was working, I was, but I was still listing. And I was not scheduling the starts, I was listing actively, like they were going live as I listed. And I was to Kansas City, so I should have, of course, put in the Kansas City Royals. But as I said, I was multitasking because my phone rang. 
And somehow I typed in the Kansas City Chiefs. So without even thinking, of course, you know, the last thing I see when I'm listing the next one, I see Chiefs. I just keep right on rolling. I'm right rolling right down through football. I'm like seven or eight teams in before I hang up the phone. And then I realize, oh my gosh, I have just listed seven or eight of my baseball teams in the middle of the break with football counterparts. So I had to go back, of course, and edit all of that and fix all of that. It's awful, see? So, like, this was an example of that. I said, Toronto, we're opening baseball. So I said, Blue Jays. But, no, Raptors. Raptors. <laughs> it's it's uh, so easy to do. That is Tim Anderson and the White Sox with Black Border Mini. And it takes forever to go in and edit stuff, by the way. And there is Nick Castellanos for the Detroit Tigers. That is a black border mini. Yeah, editing stuff on eBay is dreadful. Miggy, Detroit Tigers black border mini. So basically... Tampa Bay Rays, Logan Morrison, home run challenge. So I'm always so sad when I make a listing error that requires editing on there because you can just count on it taking a crazy length of time to go in and make one little change. David Price relic for the Boston Red Sox. You know, I bought myself a box of, what was it, 2012, I think, Gypsy Queen the other day. That was about a week or two ago, I guess. Ripped into it. I didn't really find much. But it was fun, anyway. Sometimes I buy the older boxes of stuff and just like to open them myself here and there. My hobby store guy has a lot of older stuff. I've, he's been cleaned out of a bunch of it, though, over time. Last year, even, a ton of... He had a lot of 2013 stuff still there. I bought some of it, and we actually broke some of it. And then, of course, um, I really didn't think I had that much competition for it, right? Because it had been there. He'd had it since 2013. So I did not expect there to be really a lot of competition. So I only bought, I don't know, maybe half of what he had. And I thought, yeah, we'll break that. And then I'll go back and buy the other half, whatever. And that, of course, is when Aaron Judge was heating up and he was in some of those uh, 13 products and stuff. So when I went back, it was like, whoops, nope, somebody else had gone in and bought it all. It was all gone. Severino Relic for the New York Yankees. They gave us no pinstripe. And you know how that irritates me when we get the Yankees or the Cubs and they don't give us a pinstripe. It makes me unhappy. But anyway, yeah, my store has uh, a lot of cool older stuff that he's had since when it came out. Like he used to just buy a lot, he said. He doesn't so much anymore, but he used to buy a massive amount of it so he would always have some of the baseball, not as much for the other sports. I did actually get a chance to find out how he was doing this week. I'm glad to report he's doing better. He had a heart attack a couple of weeks ago. Uh, guys owned our hobby shop here for 20 years or so. He was the first hobby shop in town, and he's the last one standing as well. Houston Astros, J.D. Davis. So a third nice little framed mini autograph tonight. Glad to see that. Yeah, so I'm, I don't know how long, how much longer he'll keep the store open, though. I know he had been wanting to sell it for a couple of years and just hadn't. And, of course, now this has happened. And 
they've got him on restricted amount of time. I think he goes in there most days, but I think some days he's only able to stay for a few hours and then he has to go home. So, you know, it's got to make it rough to keep it open. I've been wanting to sell it anyway. I'm afraid he's going to close it. I don't want him to, but... But you never know, I guess. I like having the local option, though. And I like the guy who owned it. He's just a nice guy. He's been trying to get me to buy it. Of course, he's been trying to get me to buy it for like two years. I'm like, I do not have time to run that store. <laughs> I barely have time to, you know, get to eat. And <laughs> get, every, get everybody fed. I definitely don't have time to run a retail store on top of everything else. Although there is some argument, uh, or some who would argue, I should say, that I should buy it because of their sales history, right? 20 years worth of sales history. And direct accounts with Tops and Panini and Upper Deck. And, you know, there's not a lot of accounts direct with Tops anymore. And he doesn't use it much, though, because you have to pay up front with tops. And, you know, they have you order six months in advance, so your money is tied up with no product to show for it for six months, which is kind of a drag. Bryce Harper and the Nationals. So he doesn't really use those accounts, but he could if he wanted to, I guess. So yeah, there would be those that would make the point that I should buy it for that purpose. But honestly, once it changes hands, I don't know. I think it probably wipes out all that sales history anyway. <clears throat> I don't know that for sure, but unless, you know, you kept him on as a minority partner or something where he still owns 1% or whatever, enough to keep the accounts open, I don't know. But I really don't think I have time for it. Like, I know I don't have time for it. Philip, you said your closest uh, card shop to you is two hours away. You know, there's a lot of people these days that, that say that, that it's just they don't have them anymore. And it's even the gentleman who owns ours talks about what a hard time he has getting enough of what he wants. I mean, it's just like the rest of us. He can't buy as much of anything as he wants to buy. And... So that's part of his frustration is he's got people that are willing to come in and spend a lot more money with him, but he can't get enough product. And of course, you know, all the brick and mortar guys, they their complaint is that, that breakers take all the product these days, which I'm sure breakers do get a lot of it. But I guess they kind of base it on volume. That's why I've been trying to tell I've been trying to talk him into doing breaks there. Like, I'll even help you, you know. I'll help you get started. You don't even have to do them online if you don't want. Just, you know, set up a set up a time at the store and say this is when you're going to do it. And sell the spots and people show up and you do it kind of thing. If Because he, he doesn't really want to get into all the online stuff and all that. He's an older gentleman. And he didn't want to do it, though. Which I guess, you know, you can't hardly blame him. It's, it's a lot of work, for sure. And if it's not something he's really familiar with or done a lot or whatever, he probably didn't want to fool with it. Plus, trying to get back in and get the product now would be, I imagine, even harder. Because I don't even know how, like, all these people that are coming in wanting to break, like, now at this point in time and stuff, how are they even getting any product to break? I guess they're paying the higher prices to buy at secondary market or something. Because it is not easy to get product these days. No matter how much you spend. 
Oh, yes, Philip, you are right. The people that own the, the card shops and work in them are almost always really informed and knowledgeable about the history uh, and obviously the current stuff, but I'm talking about even the history of the products and they're always interesting and fun to talk to. Scott Shebler, Cincinnati Reds, home run challenge. So I believe the Reds got a pair of challenge cards tonight, if I'm remembering that correctly. But I guess it's just, you know, that's the, that is the downside of the internet. So many of our brick and mortar stores have gone by the wayside, replaced by the convenience of the internet. But yet, without the convenience of the internet, we couldn't do fun stuff like this, like card breaks. So, good and bad of everything, I guess. I feel like one of these days we're going to wake up and just the whole world's going to be run by Amazon, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's going to be nothing else. There will be one retailer in all of the United States, and it will be Amazon.com. I don't know. It's like they're, they're taking over the world, aren't they? But yet it is convenient. It shows up at your house. Or at least hopefully. Except for when the postman, who's the fill-in guy, delivers it to the wrong address. They never did go get that for me either. Like they could see that the guy scanned it at the wrong address because I caught it right away. I went to the post office and they pulled up the geotagging on it. Showed where he delivered it. Not my house. Yeah, we'll send somebody back there. See if we can get it back. We'll follow up with you. I ask them every day for like a week. No, no, no. Nobody ever called me. The supervisor never called me. They never went back to get my package. It was just like, whoops, too bad. You're out. Out of luck. Fortunately, Amazon sent me out the package again, just being nice about it. But if they hadn't, I would have just been out the money because the guy read the address backwards. I thought it was kind of cruddy, though, that the post office didn't even care enough to go back and get it when they could see where they left it. <laughs> like, for real? You want me to go down there and knock on the door? No, because I'd probably get shot or something. I decided it wasn't worth all of that. Not that I would really get shot, but you know what I mean. Just wouldn't, just probably not a good idea to go knock on a stranger's door. Somebody I don't know, they're quite a ways down the way from me, and I don't know them at all. And I just thought, mm, probably not a good idea to go knock on the door and say, hey, you got my stuff. Daniel Murphy Relic Card for the Nationals. You, uh, Philip says Amazon is blamed for the demise of Toys R Us. You know what? I don't really think that's as much Amazon. That is Toys R Us being stupid, in my opinion. They had ample opportunity to create a good online presence and for whatever reason chose not to. And the, I mean, they had an online presence, but it wasn't a very good one. And they knew that. And I think they just kept thinking that the in-store experience would be enough to pull them through. That was just very short-sighted on their part. Brandon Woodruff and the Brewers. Because they could have competed on price and really probably just about everything that Amazon had with toys. And I don't know, they just, they just made some major missteps with Toys R Us. Not just them, of course. A lot of retailers, Sears, Kmart, etc. Tons of them made the same mistake. But I'm sure Amazon played a part, no question. But I don't think that they're completely to blame. Put it like that. All right, we are closing in on it. We have got one hit left right there that we're going to pick up and look at. And you know what? It might make s, &S happy. Because it looks like we've got Adam Jones and the Baltimore Orioles. With a little framed relic for the Orioles. 
So that's SNS. You had them tonight, yeah? SNS Design. You had your Orioles in here. Hopefully, you got that little hit. So you know what time it is now. It is time to recap. See what we've got. So our home run challenge cards. Scott Shebler and the Reds. Logan Morrison Rays. Mark Reynolds Rockies. Adam Jones Orioles. Eric Timms Brewers. Adam Duvall Reds. Next up, our hits. Adam Jones Relic for the Orioles. The Brandon Woodruff autographed mini for the Brewers. Daniel Murphy and the Nationals, a relic. A signature framed J.D. Davis for the Astros. A relic for the Yankees with Severino. Red Sox hit with a David Price relic. Non-baseball celebrity hits with a Rabowski relic. A rip card for the Giants, number 250, Will Clark. Bryce Harper relic for the Nats. Always good to pull a Bryce Harper relic out of anything. Gary Sanchez relic, Yankees. Josh Donaldson relic for the Blue Jays. A framed autograph mini for Anthony Banda and the Diamondbacks. Justin Verlander relic for the Astros. For the Orioles, we have Trey Mancini relic. For the Pittsburgh Pirates, we have a Sterling Marte relic. And then Miguel Sano for the Twins with another relic. And then the Twins have a nice little framed autograph hit with Felix Jorge. And then we started off the night with Steven Strasburg. Relic for the Nationals. So that is all that we have to break tonight. Although, you know what? You want to see the box loaders again? Sometimes I preview those or recap those, I mean. So we can do that, too. This is Bryce Harper for the Nationals. We had the full-size Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers. The smaller uh, Rafael Devers for the Red Sox. The full-size Honus Wagner for the Pirates. The smaller Gary Sanchez for the Yankees. And then the full-size Mark McGuire for the A's. So that's our break, or our breaks, I should say, for the evening. I will put up the spreadsheet information one final time here for anyone who might have missed it earlier. Or if you're watching the recap and you just kind of scrolled here to the end. Here's what you need to know. For the free shipping breaks tonight, I am projecting to get them out the door on Thursday. Hoping I can get them to you sooner, but projecting them for Thursday. And the free shipping break stuff tonight, that was all of our memorabilia, I am projecting to get out the door on Saturday. Sometimes I'm able to sneak some of those in here or there, you know, towards the, the middle or the end of the day when I know I don't have time to get a whole additional breakout, but I might have an extra 10 minutes before... The post office does their pickup to get a jersey or something out. So sometimes those will go a little differently. But for now, we're projecting Saturday for each of the memorabilia items. And of course, you don't have to worry about consolation cards if you were in Allen and Genter. If you were in one of the uh, memorabilia breaks and you didn't hit, your consolation card is typically going to be held and ship, shipped with your next package. Where you do pull something, I track it for a rolling 90 days. If you want it sent sooner, just shoot me a message on eBay. Let me know. We'll get you, uh, taken care of on that. Taking a look at the breaks coming up in the days ahead. Tomorrow night, we're doing the Onyx Preferred Players Autograph Baseballs. That is a case of three of them. It is the National Edition, so it's a completely different checklist than the checklist we had uh, earlier in the year when we opened, I don't know, maybe a couple dozen cases of those. Another half case of the Leaf Autograph Football jerseys, Immaculate Collegiate Football, the last full case I have of that, will open Monday night. Certified Football, we'll open a case of it too, also Monday night. Tuesday night, we'll wrap up Cornerstones Basketball with uh, case break number three. We'll open more Allen and Ginter on Tuesday night as well. On Wednesday, it is a super busy day with tons of stuff coming out. We'll open a full case of Elements Football, a full case of the high-end Noir Basketball, a full case of Immaculate Baseball, another high-end product, and then a half case of Chrome Baseball. On Thursday, we'll open another one of our New Era autographed uh, baseball caps and 
a half case of, uh, nope, sorry, a full case of certified. And then on Friday, a full case of elements and a half case of chrome. So that's what the days ahead are looking like. I think that has got us covered on everything tonight. So once again, thanks for joining, for chatting, hanging out with me, keeping me company. And uh, always thank you for bidding and breaking with me. So until I see you next, which will probably be tomorrow night for some of you, uh, take care now and have a great week ahead. Bye-bye.